now time for the Mike Wagner Show. Powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. The Mike Wagner Show brings you famous celebrities and amazing people from all over the world. Listen online at themikewagnershow.com and on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. And watch the interview on YouTube. So sit back and relax and enjoy the Mike Wagner Show. Hey everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit out online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Looking for a professional website without breaking your budget? Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable, custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today at 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show, get 10% off your first order. Sonic Web Studios. Take your image to the next level. Also, the Mike Wagner Show is brought to you by Evan Fine of the Senior Reserve Group. When you start thinking about retirement, who you can call about Medicare, why call the best? Evan Fine of Senior Reserve Group, specializing in Medicare, health, and long-term care insurance. Evan can be reached at 1-800-650-9357. That's 1-800-650-9357. Or email to evanfine at seniorreservegroup.com. Evan is licensed in New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Connecticut, Delaware, South Carolina, and Florida. Also, the Mike Wagner Show can be heard on the themikewagnershow.com. Also, check us on Facebook at facebook.com slash themikewagnershow. You can also download the Mike Wagner Show on SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio, and watch the interview on YouTube as well. We're here with Michigan Native, the owner of Michigan Sports and Entertainment and the host of MassiveLateFee.com podcast, and plus he's a devoted dad and many, many more. He's been a Michigan sports fan for quite a number of years, and most likely he was born. He'll tell you how far back he's going to go. And, uh, and and once you listen to this guy, it's like it makes you want to move into the state of Michigan. You either pick Detroit Grand Rapids or go to Flint, Saginaw, or in the UP. So this guy will just make you want to move up there talking sports. And ladies and gentlemen, the host of Massive Late Fee, which I personally don't. And if you've got late fees, he'll make sure that uh, you pay up. The owner of Michigan Sports and Entertainment, ladies and gentlemen, the pride of Michigan, Mark Phillips. Mark, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thanks for joining us today. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Uh... That is quite a introduction. That's probably the, uh, I don't think I've had an introduction that great since uh, my wedding. Oh, really? Okay. How long have you been married? Um, my current wife and I have been married for five years, uh, almost six. Oh, uh, well, I, I was yeah. going to say congratulations. Oh, thank you. Yeah. yeah. June, uh, June 1st will be six years. June 1st? My wife and I... Yep. Got married June first, nineteen ninety one. So coming up in June, it'll be twenty eight, and it feels like we just got married yesterday. So June first has been the magic number, and if we're in Michigan, we'll have to celebrate together or something like that. <laughs> so. Absolutely, we'll go out to uh, Andiamo. Oh my gosh, I would love to do something like that. I've been wanting to go out to Detroit and head over to Windsor, catch a little hockey, and then come back and then catch some of the Red Wings. But first of all, you've been the owner of Michigan Sports and Entertainment for quite some time. You're also host of Massive Late Fee Podcast for uh, quite a number of years, and you're also author of several novels, and your Bentley series of books introduced the world to Bentley Rhymes, a sadistic serial killer, and also you write daily columns, and you also have books on Amazon as well, too. But first of all, before we get into all that, tell us how you got started. Well, uh, as far as the website went, uh, I've known, I, I own the website with two other gentlemen, uh, Dan Murphy and Braxton Chris. And Dan and I have known each other since basically middle school. Uh, my, my best friend's little brother, Dan was his best friend because Dan is a few years younger than I am. So we used to hang out in uh, their backyard all the time, play basketball and things like that. And it started out where he asked me to come over and write some columns for him uh, on entertainment because he knew that I was an author and I had done some entertainment writing in the past. And so I came on with him on a website that he had started uh, a number of years back. And we decided to sort of go off and create our own thing. And uh, Braxton was someone that had been very valuable with us at the other website that we were at. And so the three of us kind of 
joined together and created this website. And the good thing about the partnership between the three of us is that we all have different strengths and we all have different weaknesses, and our each other's strengths really cover the other one's weaknesses. So we, we mesh very well together, and I think we've built something that we can really be proud of, and, and we're, we continue to work to, you know, get to higher and higher levels. That is amazing, too. And, of course, um, how often do you guys argue about sports? <laughs> Well, uh, Braxton is from West Virginia, so his 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 sports fanship is he went to Marshall, and uh, so he 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 doesn't get into debates with Dan and I as often as Dan and I will get into different debates. But uh, yeah, we definitely we go back and forth about the Lions or or the Tigers, what they need to do, and, and things like that. Um, every other day or so. Mm-hmm. And, and of course, you talk about the Lions and Tigers as well, too. And uh, what are your thoughts on the Detroit Lions um, this past season, just uh, having uh, a little bit below expectations under first-year head coach Matt Patricia? Yeah, they uh, they definitely underperformed, I think. They have several issues, some of which they've started to address in free agency. They, uh, they obviously need more uh, pressure on their defensive line. They need to get to the quarterback more. They uh, they signed Trey Flowers from the Patriots. It looks like, and I suppose with a general manager who came from the Patriots organization and a head coach who came from the Patriots organization, it makes sense that they're going after a lot of uh, old Patriot players. They obviously have a, a way that they like to do things and a culture that they want to bring to Detroit. And if they can have nearly as much success as the Patriots have had, I think the people of Detroit will be all for it. And, and of course, too, and uh, what are your thoughts on Matt Patricia as a uh, head coach in his first year? Do you think he'll be under pressure in his second or third year, or do you think he'll get better? It depends. The The fa- fandom in Detroit can be fickle uh, and also fiercely loyal. There, when, when people, when players or coaches perform well for us, uh, a la Sparky Anderson. You, you asked me to, to date myself. I will say that I remember the 1984 uh, World Series championship with Troy Tiger. So that gives you a bit of an idea of how old I am. I, I, I very vividly remember when they beat the San Diego Padres that year. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, whether it comes to like Alan Trammell or Steve Eiserman, uh Scotty Bowman, guys like that, they can once you have some success here, you're basically a Detroiter for life, and you can do no wrong. Mm-hmm. And you know you you never have to pay for a drink in this town. But they can be fickle if you're not performing well, as far as as sports goes. So if the Lions struggle the next two years, I definitely think he will be on the hot seat. Uh, but if you know if they have success, it, I think that you know he's another one that Detroit is is basically ready to embrace. They, the Lions fans are hungry for a, a winner. You know, it's been, it's been since 1991 since the Lions have won a playoff game. So, uh-huh. quite a long draft. Yeah, yeah, and I did remember back in 1991, I'm kind of dating myself too, and of course 1984 being a Cubs fan, which I felt the Cubs should have been playing the Tigers, except San Diego got in by the benefit of Major League Baseball. The Cubs the Cubs didn't have lights, and they basically took yep. away the uh, home field advantage because the Cubs didn't have lights and you know, whatever else. That was a big issue, but that would be another yep. subject another time. But then I also think about 1991. You're talking about the year with um, Eric Kramer you know, being the um, yep. Lions quarterback that year and going against Washington Redskins, who pretty much were on the verge of um, you know going to promised land. And the Redskins had been a thorn to Lions' side. That was... You know, back then, that was like since 1940, but now they handle the Redskins with ease just like anybody else. So I remember that very yeah. well. So <laughs> so if that gives yeah. you an indication. And, of course, you know, with um, the Lions as well, too, what are your thoughts on Matthew Stafford signing an extension to stay with the Lions until he retires? Well, I think that, you know, it's funny. There's a lot of conspiracy theories going around, uh, you know, in Michigan right now because a lot of the, the free agents that they've signed have backloaded contracts. And in the next couple of years, that the Stafford's cap number will go down enough that would actually be able to facilitate a trade with another team. So a lot of people are saying they're structuring their contracts. So if he doesn't perform in the next couple of seasons, they'll actually be able to trade him and get some draft picks out of it. 
Um, I don't know exactly about that. It's, Matthew Stafford is one of those characters where there the fan base is evenly divided, and there's almost no one in the middle. Where there are half of the half of them love him and half of them hate him and think that you know he needs to go. I, I will say in my lifetime he's the best quarterback uh, in my lifetime. Now a lot of the struggles I think are probably more team related. The football tends to be much more of a team game than a lot of, of other sports can be. You know, in baseball you can have two or three guys that perform at a very high level, you know, a couple bats, a dominant pitcher, and you can do pretty well. In basketball obviously you can have even one uh superstar and uh and, you know, just look at the Cleveland Cavaliers uh with LeBron James and without LeBron James. Um and uh, hockey can be similar, but I think football is the most team-oriented sport. And I can't, you know, quarterback wins and losses to me is not a, a hugely indicative stat of how good you are. So I think that in my mind, Stafford is fine. Stafford is not. I wouldn't call him a top five quarterback. He's not a dominant quarterback in the NFL, but I think they easily could win with him if they had the right pieces around him. So I'm fine with his contract. I think it's probably a little bit too much money, but unfortunately the way the, the, the way the pay structures are in the NFL, that's kind of you have to overpay to get anyone of value at this point. It also seems any of the wide receivers I've noticed haven't performed that great as well, too, which doesn't uh, help Matthew Stafford's statistics. But then you're talking about Matthew Stafford being the top five and you saying that Matthew Stafford's one of the better of the Lion quarterbacks. How would he rank in terms like, say, with um, Gary Danielson, Joel Ferguson, Eric Hipple, Scott Mitchell, or um, you know any of the quarterbacks um, you know from from the past uh, way back when where, where would Matthew Stafford uh, fit in that range? Well, I guess I'd probably have to put Bobby Lane one, and Matthew Stafford would probably go two. Uh, Mitchell had one really good year, uh, but you know Mitchell struggled a lot with with interceptions. Uh, I used to always joke that that uh, Scott Mitchell thought he was Brett Favre, where he could throw in two. Uh, could throw into any kind of coverage and he'd be fine, but Favre had the ability to do that, and Mitchell really didn't. Uh, so, you know, I, I would put Mitchell farther down the list, and that, that was definitely one that, like I said, I mean, they had one excellent year with a lot of talent around him. Herman Moore, Brett Perriman, Johnny Morton, Barry Sanders, obviously, mm-hmm. and a pretty good offensive line. But, uh, yeah, I would probably put Stafford number two behind Bobby Lane. I, I think that'd be really good too. So we'll talk more about the um, the Tigers, the Pistons, and the Red Wings, and uh, some of the athletes that you enjoyed watching uh, growing up in Michigan, and of course uh, later on your books as well too, and also your podcast. You're listening to the Mike Wagner Show at the Mike Wagner Show dot com, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at SonicWebStudios.com dot com for all your needs. Link a professional website without breaking a budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today at 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show. Get 10% off your first order. Sonic Web Studios. Take your image to the next level. Also, the Mike Wagner Show is brought to you by Evan Fine of the Senior Reserve Group. When you start a business or own a business for a while, who are you going to call for sole proprietorship insurance? Why not call the expert? Evan Fine of Senior Reserve Group for all your health insurance needs. Evan can be reached at 1-800-650-9357. That's 1-800-650-9357 or Evan Fine at SeniorReserveGroup.com. Licensed in seven states in New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Connecticut, Delaware, South Carolina, and Florida. Also, the Mike Wagner Show can be heard on the themikewagnershow.com. Also, check our Facebook page, facebook.com slash Show. You can also download and listen on SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. And you can watch the interview on YouTube as well. We're here with Mark Phillips, the owner of Michigan Sports and Entertainment and the host of Massive Late Fee Podcast, and plus a very devoted dad and um, a very big Lions, Tigers, Pistons, and Red Wings fan. We've been talking about you know, some of the Detroit Lions. We'll um, get more into that. And, of course, you know, growing up in the Michigan area, we're some. 